Hey guys, how you doing? I thought today I would start my um, documenting the journey of making my very first video game. Um, I've always wanted to make a video game, probably for maybe like three or so years now, I've seriously wanted to make a video game. Uh, my background in the arts is with music. I used to be a, I guess you'd call it a professional musician. Um, was in a band, we toured nationally, we had music out internationally. Uh, that led me then into um, like filmmaking and video editing, which is what I do now for my day job. I wrote and illustrated um, a couple of kids' books about five years ago, produced an animated series called The Yard. But video games are a whole nother kettle of fish. I started getting into video games, you know, typical age group. I'm in that age group where I grew up with a, an Amiga 500, a Super Nintendo, a Sega Mega Drive. But that golden era of gaming always captivated me and still does to this day. I have like a reasonably large collection of old consoles, all the old Nintendos, the old Segas. The hold up for me to starting my game was probably knowing exactly where to start. Um, so firstly I needed to decide on an engine. A few years ago I did some research and I thought I was going to go with Unity. But then I heard of a, an engine called Game Maker Studio. And the reason for choosing Game Maker Studio 2 was because my idea was from the get-go to make a, a 2D platformer. So I set about it prototyping a, uh, some ideas, conceptualised, basically just dip my toe in and see how difficult it was going to be to get player physics up and running. Um, obviously you can watch YouTube tutorials, which are awesome. I don't think any like anyone would be able to start off without them these days. I don't know if you can go to university or TAFE and learn how to use Game Maker Studio, but and I only really know about the, the language within Game Maker Studio, which is um, GML. But obviously, for those of you that know it, it uses you know variables and if statements, while statements. And the idea was simply to just make a a two D platformer that was accessible and easy to play with the art style of the golden era, what, which what I consider the golden era, the art, a similar a pixelated art style, um, but with all the, you know, the creature comforts of modern day gaming, faster frame rates, a, a bigger color palette, smoother gameplay, better music, better sounds. Not that that old stuff isn't amazing, I love it, but being a musician, I wanna, you know, I plan on doing this entirely, completely solo, solo including all the art and including all the music, so I wanna, I'll, which I'll be building in Logic Pro X and bring into the game. I'm a dad, I have two kids, and my son in particular wants to know everything he can about video games, about the old systems. The unfortunate thing about the older systems is that games like Donkey Kong Country and, and Super Mario Brothers and things like that, you don't realise how difficult they actually are until you sit down and go, I'm going to teach my four-year-old son um, how to play these games. So I kind of wanted to make a game that m more focused on um, introducing mechanics as the player gets a little bit better and holding it back. So my game is called Mado. Um, he's a tomato, tomato, <laughs> whatever, you, however, whatever the thing is, tomato, tomato. He is like a little hipster with black glasses. Um, he rides a skateboard. He kind of he kind of does all sorts of cool stuff. He's got a motocross bike. Um, at this point in development, he's he finds different shoes throughout the levels, and depending on what shoes he puts on, unlock different mechanics. So currently, I've got about nine variations of the main character that need to be built. That the instance changes when a previous player collides with an icon, uh, which is shoes spinning around. This is so that if you want to. You can finish the level without getting it, but if you want to take the risk and go down and get the icon, that might be hidden in a harder spot to get. If you get it, it's like risk and reward, but you don't have to get it if you don't want to. So that's where development's at currently. My other big parameter straight out the gates was that I want this to only be left and right for controls and a one action button game. That was one of the big hangups straight out the gates was that I kept adding more functionality. I kept adding additional buttons to do things, but I had in, in big writing on the whiteboard, one action button only, circled, because I would constantly be a couple of hours down the track and I'd be like, fuck, I'm gonna need more more buttons. And the two reasons mainly behind that is because I want it to be super accessible for youngsters or newbies to games. Like, I love Super Meat Boy, because it's hard, but that's one of the only hard games I really enjoy playing. I kinda just wanna have it nice and simple. Look at my board, remember what I've commit, what idea I've committed to, if I have a great idea that doesn't fit within those parameters, maybe it's for another project. But nah, 
you can't think about second projects when you're at the start of your very first game. So anyway, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for listening to my very first developer's log of the making of Mado. I'm Brad, nice to meet you guys. Uh, see you again soon.